Well, good morning. We've gotten a few requests to know what's been going on with this roll top desk. And if you saw the last video, we were starting to work on this tambour up here. We've kind of finished it. And the last part we did was put these handles on and this um, wider strip of wood that we're going to install the lock in over here. But the tambour works really nice. And it was, uh, it was a lot of work, but this part is finished and it slides up and down in the tracks really easy. Gonna be changing these handles and I'll explain to you in a little while why I'm changing them. But let's take a look now at the inside and basically we can consider the desk finished the way it is. Sanding and finishing would come next, but no roll top desk is complete without useless cubbies in here. So let's start working on those cubbies. And these are the plans for the cubbies that we're going to be building. And we can see that the total dimension across is going to be 51 and a half inches. That will fit within the back wall of the desk. Um, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six drawers on each side. And then we're going to have two panels one here and one here. These aren't going to be drawers, but they'll be panels that can be used to store computer cables or something like that. So let's get busy and we're going to put this cubby together. And here's the cubbies. Uh, and the point of today's video was not so much the construction of these, but how we're going to make these drawers that are going to fit into here. Um, it's, it's not hard, but it's tedious and it's time consuming. And uh, we have these little separators here that we're going to modify later on. But let's get to these drawers and uh, we'll show you how we make them with this crazy router setup that I have for making dovetails. First thing that we're gonna do is measure the openings to these drawers and then we're gonna add an eighth of an inch all the way around so that we can have a rabbit and this drawer will close on the outside and not fit within the hole. So we'll measure this and then we'll cut our wood an eighth of an inch bigger in all dimensions. The wood we're using, which is another question that was asked which I didn't cover, is quarter sawn white oak. Um, I wouldn't do that again. Yes, it's very beautiful, but very expensive. <laughs> And um, we're going to start off with a piece now that's one eighth of an inch larger in all dimensions. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to soften this rough edge around here. This is too sharp. So we're going to do a small round over on the router table and we'll see what that looks like. After rounding it off, it gives it a nice soft appearance. And of course, this hasn't been sanded or anything, but we can start to work with this. Our next step is to get this drawer to fit within here, and we're going to cut a rabbit all the way around, leaving that one eighth inch overlap all the way around. We're also gonna do that on the router table, and I'll show you the gadget we use to do that with. The kit we use to create that rabbit is made by Whiteside. And by changing the wheel on top here, for either one of these wheels here, we can control the depth of the cut that we're going to make. They provide a convenient little chart here that will show you whatever size you're making, that's the wheel that you put on top. It's real easy to do and we get some pretty accurate cuts. Run it on the router table and we run it at a fairly slow speed uh, because it is a rather large burr. So let's show you what that looks like after we've reamed that out. Here's our door front that we've previously softened the edges around with a half round over, half inch round over, and now we've cut the rabbits on the inside. And we get a nice clean cut all the way around on all four sides. This is going to enable this door front to fit right within the frame. And from here, we could start working on our half blind dovetails that will attach the sides to this drawer. So let's see how this fits in there first. Okay, we've completed the uh, rabbit 
and we want to see how this is going to fit as our draw front and that fits real nice. We're kind of splitting the difference between here and the adjacent drawer so we have an even reveal all around. Now this piece is ready to um, do the half blind dovetail on the front drawer face and we're going to be doing through dovetails on the rear. So let's get over to our crazy dovetail setup and we'll show you how this is going to work. This is the uh, Akita dovetail jig. Uh, this is not going to be a tutorial on how to use this uh, simply because um, they're not made anymore. Um, I'm not for sure what happened with the company. Um, they made them for a few years. Just a superb jig. Um, very versatile, very easy to use from an amateur like myself. And you can make a variety of dovetails, through dovetails, blind dovetails, half blind dovetails, anything that you can imagine. Very easy to do with this jig. Um, I'm mentioning it because there are several available still on um, eBay and you can find them. They're relatively inexpensive and super easy to use. The jig basically uses these fingers. And these fingers are set into a rail along the top edge and this will allow for you to compose the spacing and uh, position of the dovetails. Different fingers are used for different procedures. Some of them may be used for making half blind dovetails and some of them may be used for um, through dovetails. Uh, depending on which finger and where you place it and how you hold it in here will determine what kind of dovetail you're going to make. If you look very carefully on the rail here, there are pencil marks. This allows you to repeat the position of these fingers every time you take them out or put them in. There is a little dot right on here, a little marking on there, and uh, you can see it on the other side also, right there. And if you line those up with those um, pencil marks, um, you have very repeatable results for doing batch work with these things. Very easy to use and the router just rides along these two aluminum rails here. I'll show you how that works. Okay, with the appropriate fingers in place, and in this case we're going to be starting with the half blind dovetails on the drawer front. When they're in place and we've got them lined up with our predetermined pencil marks, the pieces slid in and the depth that it slides in is determined by the thickness of the draw side. So we get that exactly like that and when we're in place we just tighten it right down. And that's not going to move anymore. The router that we're using is a Makita and it has to be equipped with a 7 16 guide bushing. This is the only size guide bushing that will work with this dovetail jig. It's imperative or else you're not going to get joints that are going to fit properly. So let's start routing this and I'll show you what it looks like when we're finished. Okay, we've routed this draw front now for the half blind dovetails and they do come out pretty sharp and distinct. Now with only a change of these guide fingers, I can now start to route the draw sides that will fit into this half blind. Let's change these fingers, we'll route that, we'll show you what it looks like. Okay, here now is the draw side. This will be the draw that will fit into the draw front and this will be the rear of the drawer that will be done with through dovetails over there. So as you can see, we get beautiful crisp cuttings here that should fit exactly into here. And it's a little bit tight, but that's a pretty good fit without any sanding or any persuasion with the hammer yet. So let's get going on the through dovetails for the rear. We'll do the other side. Let's put this together, see what it looks like. Okay, so in the front we have the half blind dovetails that are going to fit within this rabbit and towards the rear to connect the sides to the rear of the drawer we've made through dovetails over here. 
The only thing I mentioned, I didn't mention to you, was that before we assembled this drawer, is that we cut a groove in the floor to accommodate the oak plywood that's going to form the floor of the drawer. Well, one down, 11 more to go, and with the new dovetail jig that I have, I shouldn't say new, new to me, uh, it makes batch work real easy. Let's get these together, put some handles on them, and see how they look. Okay, so here we are now after quite a few hours of work um, and we've got these uh, cubby drawers completed um, and we've also got the handles in place. Uh, they came out pretty good and what saved my life on these was that Akita jig that makes it so easy to set up and do reproducible batch results. Um, I know that jig is not made anymore, uh, but you can find them on eBay or Craigslist. And if you're an amateur like me, it's well worth picking up to do some easy, accurate dovetails. I haven't decided yet about these center dividers. I don't really want to leave them straight like this, uh, so I'm going to make some sort of curve in here, but that's for later. The end pieces are for storing computer cables, and they're held in by magnets. Um, I don't have the draw poles for those, and the reason is uh, that when I first ordered the poles for this project, this is the style I had ordered. Um, by the time I got around to doing these drawers and ordering the new poles for these drawers, the style like this was no longer made in this size. So I had to take all these off, send them back, and Lee Valley Tools was nice enough to give me a refund, and I ordered a different one, which is, I think it's called Oil Burnished Brass or something, which I actually like better. So we're going to be putting these new ones on and getting rid of all the old ones. Um, it, it's been a while, and... Uh, there's a lot more work to do. I'll keep you posted. If you're interested, leave a comment, and thanks for watching.